Hey, how's it going, guys? In today's video, we're going to learn how to create an interactive map palette using PyQt5 framework. Alright, so here's the application we're going to uh, be creating in this exercise. I know the fonts is a little bit uh, tiny because I'm using a 4K monitor, and the default font size didn't get scaled very well. But hopefully, you can uh, see just the overall interface. But anyway, so um, from this uh, application window, we have an interface on the top, which is a spin box. And here, I can adjust the uh, frequency wave of my graph by controlling the uh, up and down uh, buttons. And here we have a menu to close uh, the application. Alright, so that's going to be uh, everything we're going to build. Just a phase simple application to get started. Alright, so here let me go ahead and import the uh, libraries. So to build this application, we'll be using uh, quite many libraries. So first, I'm going to import the system module. Then I'm going to import Mapper Loves a module. Then I need to specify I want to use uh, PyQt5. In this case, it's going to be QD5 as the uh, framework. Now, these two lines are the uh, import statement uh, to import PyQt5 uh, modules. All right now let's look at the uh, widgets that we'll be using from the uh, PyQt5 framework. So from the Qt widgets module, I'm going to uh, import Qt application and to control how the window application size is going to get uh, resized, I'll be using Q size policy to manage that. Then we have Q widget, Q main window to uh, create the windows. Q menu to create the menu bar on the top, and Q feed box layout to organize the widgets, and finally we have the uh, Q spin box to adjust the uh, frequency value. Now from the map uh libraries, here I should move this to the top. To generate dummy data, I'll be using NumPy's library. Then to import the uh, figure converse uh, QTAGG uh, class. I was just going to be the uh, backend uh, window framework to hold the uh, MapPerlabs application in PyQt5. And figure is basically the uh, window to hold MapPerlabs graph. The first thing I'm going to create is the uh, Converse template. So this is going to be the uh, window that holds the MapPerlabs graph. All right, so here I'm going to name the class. Uh, my MPL converse, and we're going to pass figure converse uh, class as the parent class. Then we're going to uh, create our constructor to hold the uh, default parameters. So if you have used uh, PyQt5 before, then you will know that it's always good practice to have a parent parameter, just in case if you want to uh, supply a different uh, class or different uh, widget application, as the base layer, then we can uh, override that with this uh, parent parameter. And here we are setting the uh, default window width and height. All right, so uh, let me do this. I'm going to set this to 10 and 6 because I'm using a 4K monitor. And increase the DPI to, let's do 700 just in case. So this line here is creating a mapper loves uh, figure object. And we're going to inherit the uh, Arguments value from the constructor. So if you've used uh, my palette before, then you know uh, we can construct the uh, window using figure size. Then we'll provide the window width and window height followed by the uh, DPI value. Then we're going to create one single graph. And 111 means I want to insert the graph in the first column in only one single graph. So this control how many number of graph that you want to uh, insert to your application. Or to a map palette window. Then we need to uh, construct the instance of the uh, parent class. Now this line here is going to set the uh, parent widget or parent object. And access plot is going to uh, display the graph. Now this uh, figure canvas that set size policy is going to control how your window is going to get expanded. So in case you want to set the uh, window size to a fixed height and width, then we'll change this to fixed for uh, both width and height. But for now, I want to be able to expand the window 
Right, so that's going to be the uh, canvas uh, window template. Now we're going to uh, insert the graph to the uh, canvas uh, window. Right, so here I'm creating another class. I'm going to name this class my static MPL canvas. And we're going to pass uh, this uh, my MPL canvas class is the uh, pen class. All right, so think about this as the template to hold uh, your MapPilot application of figures. All right, so inside this class, I have this function called update figure. Now, depending on the uh, graph that you are going to create, your function is going to uh, be different. So in this case, I simply just want to create a very simple uh, wave graph. And my parameter is going to be uh, f, stands for frequency value. So inside my update figure method, so every time when I updated my data points, I want to clear the axis first, and that's what this line is for. Then I want to reassign the value. So here, uh, when we update the uh, spin box, the value is going to get passed to this uh, f parameter. So for example, uh, if your spin box value is going to be two, then f is going to be two times uh, pi times uh, t. So t is going to be uh, my x-axis data points, and s is going to be my y-axis uh, data points. Then I'm going to plot the graph, then draw the graph. All right, so at this point, we can uh, go ahead and create our PyQt application window. So here I'm going to create a class called application window, and it's going to be the uh, PyQt5 uh, application window template. And to launch the PyQt5 application window, we need to create an instance of the uh, Q application object, followed by the uh, application window. Then we're going to create the application window object. And let me name this to app. Actually, let's do window. Then I'll give my application a title, display the application. And system.exe is going to kill the application once uh, we terminate the uh, session. All right, now let's go back to application window. All right, so the first item that I'm going to create in my application is going to be the uh, menu bar. All right, so here I'm going to create my Q menu object. And I name the object self file menu. So this item here, uh, add symbol for by file, is going to be the uh, main file menu that we're going to display on the top. Then we need to uh, specify the uh, parent entity, and we're just going to be linked to this uh, key application window. Now from the file menu, I want to add an action to uh, close the application. So I'm name this as uh, quit. So these two characters represent a uh, shortcut key assignment. I'm assigning letter F to the uh, file menu and letter Q to the uh, quit menu, followed by the action that I want to perform. In this case, I want to close the window. So this one's optional. Uh, just in case, uh, if you want to make sure that you have assigned the uh, correct uh, shortcut key, because sometimes you may accidentally uh, assign the same shortcut key to multiple actions. Then we're going to add the uh, file menu to the menu bar. All right, so if I go in the uh, launch the application, oh, and this should be a window. And here's the file menu followed by the quit action. Oh, actually, uh, I took that back. So this line here is actually uh, providing a description to the submenu. So if I use the shortcut Control Q, and that's going to close the window. Now under the menu bar, we're going to insert a widget. In this case, it's going to be a blank window. Then I want to create a vertical layout, and I'll pass this uh, main widget object as the uh, default window to organize my widgets and which later I'm going to insert to uh, inside this widget. Now let's look at the application again. Now inside this uh, key widget window, we have a spin box widget followed by the uh, canvas. 
So I'm going to create the spin box widget first using QSpinBox class. And I'll set the uh, minimum value to 1 and the maximum value to 10. And single step is going to control the uh, value change every time when you uh, click on the uh, up or down buttons. And value is going to be the default value when you launch the application. All right, so let's see. Now we can create the uh, canvas, which is the uh, map level window to hold the graph. All right, so here I'm providing my uh, main widget, which is this window here, to the my statics MPL canvas class. And here let me uh, get rid of the parameters because I want to use the uh, default parameter from the template itself. Now to update the graph, so here from the spin box widget, I want to reference the value change signal. And I want to connect this signal to a function called SC, so from the uh, canvas itself, the update figure method. So if we go back, so from my, uh, this, uh, my static MPL canvas uh, class template, I have this uh, updated figure function to update the graph. Now at this point, we're almost finished with the application. We just need to add those two widgets to my window. All right, so let me launch the application and see. Oh, okay, so I forgot one thing. I forgot because I'm using a Qmin window uh, class as the default uh, window template. So I need to uh, use self.setCentral widget method and need to provide the window that I want to display. All right, so here we go. And I can see that my DPI is set to high. All right, so that looks much better. So we're not done yet. There are just one more step to go. I want to uh, insert one last line uh, on top of the central widget method which is to uh, set the window as the focus when we launch the application, and just in case. Now at this point, we have officially uh, finished the application. Now if I launch the application again. All right, so my default is set to one. Now if I uh, change the value, and based on this, uh, you know, based on this uh, spin box, that value change signal, that connect, I'm passing the uh, spin box value, in this case it's going to be 9, to this uh, update figure method from uh, this class here. And the uh, draw method is going to update the graph. And we know uh, 10 is going to be the max, so if I try to uh, increase the value, exit 10, and it's not going to let me. Let me see if I can merely override the value. Actually, I can't, so yeah. So this is going to be everything I'm going to cover in this video. And hopefully you guys found this video useful. And don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.